Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Mohit, and I'm here with Renan. And we are going to show some of the work we have been doing for running Yarn alongside Mesos. Now, this is not a talk about Yarn versus Mesos, or Batman versus Superman, or why picking one over the other is going to solve world hunger. Uh, this talk touches upon uh, an interesting topic of running multiple resource manager in a data center uh, without statically partitioning it. Uh, let's see how. So this is MesosCon. I'm pretty sure you guys attended the uh, Mesos 101 and the advanced Mesos talk, so everyone knows pretty much what Mesos is. Uh, it's a cluster manager. It's a two-level scheduler and has a great support for uh, long-running services and uh, data processing jobs. Uh, about Yarn, it stands for uh, yet another resource negotiator. It's a single-level scheduler. And it has a great support for data processing workloads. And Yarn actually grew out of the Hadoop 1 ecosystem when the Hadoop team rewrote it uh, for the next generation Hadoop. And Yarn was the, uh, the primary cluster uh, resource management component of that. And I think apart from, uh, I think Google, everyone who does uh, data processing at large scale, they have a Hadoop cluster in-house. So earlier this year, when we started looking um, at Mesos for a variety of computing needs we have. Um, we figured that if we will run Mesos and Yarn together in the data center, it's going to statically partition it. And static partitioning is bad, as you all know, because it leads to wasted resources and wasted money. And we want to avoid that. Now, um, some of you might be thinking, why not just uh, run Mesos and Yarn together? Well, when you do that, um, you lose out the advantage of that one offers over the other. For instance, uh, as of today, uh, Mesos has a great support for running long-running services as well as uh, data processing workloads, whereas Yarn uh, doesn't support uh, some of the long-running uh, service capabilities, but it has a great support for data processing uh, workloads. So like I said, if you choose one over the other, you lose some of the advantages that the other offers. So we said, okay, let's uh, give running Yarn and Mesos together a shot and see how it goes. So we set a goal for ourselves and we said, uh, we want to come up with a solution that will allow us to share resources between Yarn and Mesos, um, with Mesos being the prime resource manager. And we wanted to come up with a solution uh, that is non-intrusive. Uh, when I say non-intrusive, we don't want to modify uh, Yarn or the Mesos protocols. And doing so allow us to um, upgrade both of these easily in future. Also, a lot of companies who run Hadoop in-house uh, their distrib distributions are certified by vendors, and having a non-intrusive solution, I guess, helps with that. Now, before we look into the solution, uh, I'll just quickly give a overview of the Yarn architecture. Uh, so Yarn has something called a resource manager. It's uh, similar to a Mesos master. Uh, and then Yarn has something called a node manager. It's similar to a Mesos slave. It advertises the resources of the node, executes tasks on the node. And it has something called an app master, uh, which is similar to a Mesos framework. I'll not go into much details because we don't have a lot of time. Uh, so let's look at how it works. So on the top, you can see there's something called a control plane. Um, it's an independent software uh, that allows uh, both Mesos and Yarn to uh, share resources. Uh, it basically orchestrates uh, the scaling of Yarn's node managers. So now, like I said, uh, we want Mesos to act as the, the primary uh, resource manager for the data center. So every node uh, will run a Mesos slave. Now, for Yarn to also schedule tasks on the clusters, uh, we need to run some of the node managers. And those node managers will be spawned as Mesos tasks on these nodes. So the control plane uh, will make a decision based upon some parameters. And uh, then it, it will tell Mesos to launch the node manager. Now, for the rest of the talk, whenever you see the Mesos block, it basically means um, Aurora framework and the Mesos master. I mean, it's a single block for the sake of brevity. So the control plane basically asks uh, the Mesos to launch a node manager, and the node manager gets launched as a task uh, on the node. So, and in this example, the node manager gets uh, 2.5 CPU and 2.5 GB of RAM for, let's say. Now, once the node manager process comes up, it um, registers with the Yarn's resource manager and advertises um, a subset of resources that it has been allocated. Uh, it does that because it needs some resources for itself to run. Now, once the node manager is registered with the Yarn's resource manager, the resource manager can now start launching containers. Now, 
this node manager, uh, when it is launched, it gets mounted under the, the C groups hierarchy for Mesos. And since the node manager also supports C groups, uh, we configure it to mount its C group hierarchy under uh, Mesos C group hierarchy so that we can have a nice top down uh, enforcement of uh, resource limits. So now let's look at um, a scenario where we can use this kind of architecture for handling traffic spikes. So let's assume that you know, in your data center you're running a yarn cluster and then you have a Hadoop cluster. Now you want to use the, uh, and you know that the, the Mesos cluster is let's say being used to serve site traffic whereas the yarn cluster is being used for some offline jobs or batch processing jobs. And in, in event of a traffic spike you want to uh, make use of the spare capacity on the yarn cluster for the failover. So these two nodes that you see on the screen are the nodes from the, the Hadoop cluster and they are running uh, the node manager as, as the only process, let's say. And node manager gets um, pretty much all the resources on the node. So now let's say there's a traffic spike on eBay.com and one of the pools, the uh, SCH pool is under load. Now we want to uh, deploy some of uh, additional instances of, uh, of that application on the Hadoop cluster. So the control plane basically gets some signals from the monitoring uh, system. And it tells Mesos to vertically scale down the node managers that are running on the, the Hadoop nodes so that we can create some spare capacity for uh, deploying the, the, the ailing service which is under load. Uh, once that is done, uh, we can deploy the, the ailing service and uh, the eBay.com survives the, the, the traffic spike. Now, once the spike goes away and the, the control plane basically detects that, it can initiate a restore cluster flow which basically terminates the, the additional instances uh, that we deployed uh, for the ailing service. And then it restarts the, uh, the node manager with, with the full capacity. Um, so that's, that's one example where we uh, leverage the, the vertical scaling of node manager uh, to fail over the, the, uh, for, for the traffic spike use case. Now, there are some um, challenges with this approach. For instance, uh, when you restart the node manager, uh, it kills all the child containers that are running, uh, running on, on that. And uh, there is an active issue uh, in the YARN project that's, uh, that's going to address this. Uh, also, when you are picking a node manager to restart, you have to be very careful because you don't want to restart one which is running an app master because doing so, uh, in, in certain, for certain app master skills, all the child containers across the cluster. So you don't want to uh, do that as of today, but uh, in the next release of Yarn, they're going to uh, fix that as well. And also, Node Manager today doesn't support uh, the, the C group's memory subsystem. Uh, so once that is there, we'll be able to uh, better control the, the amount of resources um, on, on, the, on the node. So, So our, our future vision is that uh, we want to get rid of the notion of saying that I want to run my job um, on a Mesos cluster or on a Yarn cluster in a setting where your data center has multiple resource manager. Instead, we want to have, a, have one unified cluster where you can have multiple resource managers running and you can still use, um, uh, you can still run any task from a resource manager on any node. So uh, like in this example, uh, you, the orange tasks are the tasks launched by Mesos, whereas the blue ones are from the, the resource manager uh, for Yarn. And as you can see, we, we have a mixed distribution of the, the workloads that are running on the nodes. So with that, I'll hand it over to Renan, who is going to uh, talk about a different use case. In this use case, we've moved away from having separate clusters, and now we have a unified data center. Uh, so it's basically a, uh, an architecture where you can run anything anywhere. And as you can see here, both nodes are at full capacity. We have a node manager and a resource manager. So what happens if we provide a job and uh, the, the YARN uh, framework only has enough resources to launch an app master? Uh, the app master gets launched, but uh, YARN at this point is starved for resources. It needs more resources to uh, finish its MapReduce job. The control plane in this case detects starvation and talks to Mesos uh, to preempt uh, service Y, which is of lower priority. And we will horizontally scale in this case by launching a no another node manager and uh, giving the resources to Yarn that it needs to finish its MapReduce task. In this case, we really want to focus 
on the detection of the uh, starvation. So this is a very difficult problem because we need to talk to yarn and get information out of it in order to determine successfully if, it, if an application is being starved. So that's what I spent my summer doing. Uh, actually, uh, I created a new uh, API which uh, exposes the resource requests from the Yarn scheduler to the outside world. And uh, we've actually contributed this back to Yarn and it's uh, pending for uh, it to see if the guys from Yarn want to include it in their one of their next releases. So I encourage you, if you like this idea, to go and uh, help us get this included. Uh, so this, what this API does actually is it, it exposes the memory, the virtual course, and the locality constraint. So Yarn has this notion of locality constraint where it sends, if you notice, it has three different, uh, three different requests. These are all varying levels of uh, how close they can get to uh, putting this new node manager or putting this task in uh, the node where the data is located. Uh, it has this notion of bringing computation to the data and not data to computation. So this is its uh, way of doing its best effort to do that. Um, this API uh, can use JSON and XML and it's completely non-intrusive. It's simply exposing uh, the resource request that uh, the scheduler is asking for inside. And with that, I'll hand it over back to Mohit. So um, as you've seen last couple of slides, uh, the, control plane, the control plane, which, is a, which was an independent software, acts as a key piece of the, the solution that we, we are proposing. Now, after talking to a lot of people at um, different places, we've, uh, we got a, like a unanimous feedback that why don't we just convert this to a Mesos framework? And that's what we are going to spend tomorrow's hackathon for. So, uh, that, and here are some of the challenges uh, that we think are very interesting when it comes to designing such a, such a Mesos framework. One of them is uh, when you are trying to flex up or flex down the node manager, that is when you are trying to scale the node managers, do you want to do it vertically or horizontally? Because when you try to uh, horizontally scale too many um, node managers, you might affect the data locality uh, aspects of it. Also, when you try to scale it vertically, uh, you might end up with uh, wasted resources because uh, there might not be enough uh, tasks for the node manager to run, or some of the containers uh, might not fit some node managers, so. Uh, you might have problems with that. Also, when you're trying to flex up a node manager, um, what, what, what are the, um, the resource constraints that you want to offer? Uh, we have this notion of profiles. You can have a small profile with certain amount of resources, and you can have a large profile. So it, it, bec it leads us to an interesting bin packing problem when you're trying to uh, scale up the node managers as well. Also, with, uh, with certain limitations right now, which are um, actively in progress, um, to, to being fixed in Yarn. Uh, we cannot choose certain node managers because they might be running uh, certain app masters, which uh, if we kill, um, can have a devastating effect on the, the job that was submitted. Yeah, also, um, some uh, distributed databases like HBase also runs on Yarn, and if you have one of those in your data center, you might have to be like, really careful uh, your scheduling algorithm needs to be very careful when it's trying to flex down a node manager because you don't want to take down a node manager which was running a critical container like an edge based uh, zone server which might affect the, the availability of the database. So um, with that, I would like to conclude and I will invite every one of you to the hackathon tomorrow to join us and write this framework from scratch. Thank you. In the case of um, the node manager that you're launching through uh, the, the Mesos um, slave, at least the way today the, the, the node manager works, it's not really calculating memory based on your, uh, your C group's resources. It's calculating memory based on your process tree. So if this is a cluster that is under heavy load, you launch that node manager, it will launch uh, a bunch of uh, containers, and they will ask for more memory than it, than, it, than it is allocated to, and they will die. Does this really work in production? 
So uh, two things there. So as of today, uh, the node manager doesn't support uh, memory subsystem of C groups. So we cannot really use the CFS scheduler to enforce it tightly. Uh, but they might introduce that in the future, and then we'll be able to control that. The second thing is uh, when, you con when you start the node manager, you can actually configure it to advertise only a subset of resources. And resource manager, when it is trying to schedule containers, it should honor that. So if both of these things work hand in hand, then it shouldn't be a problem, in my opinion. So when you're uh, flexing up and flexing down the node managers, are when like when you flex them down, are you just killing off the entire node manager and all of its resources, all of its containers, and, and flexing yes. up? Is that just uh, restarting it again? Yeah. Restarting it again with a larger profile. Yeah. Okay. Because uh, we're looking to do like a resize task. Uh, mm -hmm. There's a Jira and like a preliminary patch for it uh, mm -hmm. in Mesos that I think would you know, greatly simplify that where you could just grow or shrink the C groups container for the node manager and all of its subtasks. Yeah, that's a, that's a great point, but it works at two levels. One is at the C groups level, like you said. The second is uh, you have to also change the node manager's configuration uh, to, to basically imply that uh, it has been restarted with a revised amount of um, CPU and memory so that when it comes up, it should only advertise that much to the resource manager because Okay, so you would need to change the node manager to itself to actually dynamically. Yes, that. and this is a simple Aurora job at the uh, in the appendix which has um, some hints on how you can achieve this. It's uh, not readable. I'm sorry for that, but it's for your reference for later. Thank you.